How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Blue Shifting, and welcome to... Oh, gosh, how do you say this? I think it's, uh, Mamiya. But, I don't know. It looks like Mam Mamiya. But, this is gonna be interesting. So, a bit of a content warning before we begin. This game is tagged on Steam for very, having very dark themes. We're talking, um, abuse. Um, we're talking like violence, we're talking manipulation, um, potential like self-destructive, self-thought, uh, self-harm thoughts. So this is not one to go into lightheartedly. I don't know anything about this. I go into this blind like anybody else, but you've got to understand that when they put those kinds of warnings there, I don't want to going into this that blind. So keep that in mind that this is not going to be delicate topics. This is going to be heavy topics, but... From what I've seen so far, it looks like it's a way to explore them in a way that's organic. Because the nature of the story involves the end of the world. And what do people do and how do they behave when they don't think there's time anymore? That we have a set date where we're all dying. Like, what do you do with the time you have left? So naturally, it's going to be exploring a lot of like the darker sides of humanity. But I'm hoping we'll also see some of the lighter sides. I'm not really sure exactly what this story is going to be. I doubt this is one that's going to be very choice heavy because I think it's more about exploring narratives with characters. So let's, uh, I think we're going to start to jump into it and get started. But I'm going to do some configurations real fast. And I'm going to make sure that the sound balancing is about what I hope for and just making sure this is going to be as good an experience as it can be. But thank you guys so much for being here. I'm really interested to see where this goes. So brace yourselves and let's see how this all starts. Okay, so here we are. Scenario selection. Fall down or downfall. I have no idea what this is. I, um... I guess we just get to pick one and I think we'll... I guess we'll just start on the left. Fall down. Natsume died. Well, that's a great way to start. Um, did someone pass away? Yeah, yes. They're holding a funeral for the boy called Natsumi. Natsumi. Well, uh, I think I might have known him. Oh, really? Probably. At least I think so. In that case, why not bring him some flowers? Huh? C can I? Of course, I'm certain. He would appreciate it. I'm getting a bit tense. No, it's gonna be okay. I just need to get inside. After mustering that, that, that mu muttering that to myself, I nodded and took a step forward. Hmm. Ah. Oh, I'd end up bumping into someone. Oh, sorry. Oh, so am I. I bumped into someone's tall, dark back, but as I looked up, I was surprised to see the face that still carried a hint of boyish youth. He was head. He was he, he was a head taller than most people, making him easily e making him easily stand out, whether he might have liked it or not. Although his bump happened entirely due to my own clumsiness, he addressed me with genuine sincerity. I'm off then. Oh, right. I opened the door. A solemn atmosphere hung heavily in the air as I stepped into the church. Okay, so I'm not sure who I am or who I'm supposed to be following quite yet, and I have no idea if there's any like audio dialogue at all, like, or if it's just going to be me the whole time. If that's the case, buckle up for my terrible voice acting. Natsumi. Ugh. Some wept, others looked ahead in silence. Where, are all, where are they all reminisced about their time they'd spent with him? I hope they are. The service would begin in seconds, and I was the only one still standing. I hurriedly scanned my surroundings for a place where I could sit. I... Okay. Wow, there's choices that have no context! I okay. take a seat deeper in, take a seat on the left, take a seat on the right. Take a seat close to the exit. I don't think we need to particularly get closer to the exit. But I'll take a seat on the left. I'll take a seat on the left. Um, I'll sit next to you, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Feel free to. 
I kept gazing at the flowers far ahead while waiting for the ceremony to begin. Then came the coffin. Everyone around me muttered prayers or remembrance of Natsumi. A chant played as the coffin was carried forward. Hearing the priest talk, all I could think about was its contents. A while later, the service began in earnest, accompanied by organ music. The attendees stood up and brought flowers to the coffin. May I say that the music is just freaking great. Holy cow. Hmm. A student with darker skin approached it next. I... I mean, I don't know. All I know about him is that he's got darker skin, but I'm curious. Finding myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. The dark skinned student took some of the gathered white flowers and approached the coffin. His amber eyes were directed right at it. I could see the strength of his will reflected in them. His graceful fingers didn't tremble one bit. As he placed his flowers, he slightly, si slightly parted his lips, almost like he was about to say something. In the end, all he did was furrow his brow and close his eyes before ultimately returning to his seat. <sighs> The one to approach the coffin next was a dark-haired student with a mole under his eye. I... well, I'm also curious. This is the one I sat next to. Did you have, uh, bio... like the... was it, um, where you have two different eye colors, like biochroma? Finding myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. He slowly approaches the coffin with a downcast look. The snow-white flowers he carries seem to perfectly match his prim and proper aura. As he bent over to place his flowers, his glossy locks sway forward, hiding his eyes. His youthful look makes him appear almost translucent. I had completely captivated my attention. He then slowly stood up and returned to his seat with his head hanging, even lower than before. This guy. Ruffling his pinkish hair, a man who with an intense look on his face stepped forward. I'm curious. Like, I'm guessing it's like this is a ways of like skipping through the beginning faster on your multiple playthroughs. Finding myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. He approaches the coffin with a rough, unsteady gait, but by the, but the way he took the white flowers was anything but that. His hair covered most of his face, preventing me from discerning his expression. In contrast to his earlier demeanor, it, there was a certain melancholy in the way he placed out his flowers. <sighs> I was left in awe by that strange, uncanny imbalance. Next, the coffin was approached by a tall boy in a school uniform. I am curious. Finding myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. His considerable height would make no doubt make him stand out in any crowd. He walks with a straightforward stance, giving the impression of someone with a noble, righteous soul. Even the white flowers he carries seemed to match him in terms of sheer dignity and grace. His large eyes gleamed with genuine grief. Natsumi. He uttered the name in a voice so low you'd have to strain your ears to hear him. Oh, excuse me. Once all the attendees had set down their flowers, the funeral came to a close with a few words addressed to the bereaved family. Surrounded by people leaving the hall, I... Hmm. You know what? I don't know why I'm here, but I think I'd probably go outside because, like, this is most likely a time for, like, like the close family and friends to kind of bond. Uh, I get the feeling I'm not as much about not no no I don't know much much about Natsumi so I think I'll go outside. Wanting some fresh air, I decided to step outside for a moment. The cold December air outside the church felt unusually pleasant. I walked around for a bit until my eyes met another student's. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Were you also attending Natsumi's funeral? Yeah, I was. I'm pretty sure he meant. I'm pretty sure he meant a lot to me. You're pretty sure. Okay, so the amnesia. That was an oddly vague way of putting it. Oh, sorry. I was very young at the time. I'm not entirely sure. But Natsumi probably lived in my neighborhood, and <laughs> we often played together. I can remember like it was yesterday. On an especially snowy day during the winter, we ended up building a snowman together. We looked around for sticks and leaves to give it a face, too. I was in charge of making the face, and I remember making use of all the stuff we'd gathered together. We used red fruits for the eyes, a large leaf in place of a nose, and an arched stick for its mouth. Was it cute? Oh, yes, very. Looking back at it, Natsumi probably wanted me to have the most fun, have the most fun part. 
could be. He was so nice. And now he's dead, isn't he? We can't see him again. Yeah. God, he, this kid, he sounds sweet, but he's acting so shifty. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. Oh, it's fine. I'm actually glad to have heard the new, uh, heard a new Natsumi story I wasn't aware of. Really? I'm glad you liked it. Um, yes. Well, it might be rude of me to say this, and I don't want you to get upset, but you kind of remind me of him a little bit. Okay. I see. Goodbye, then. Take care. You too. Who am I? <laughs> okay, so, Sao Keito. A person's death. This was the first time I'd experienced the death of someone I knew. All my grandparents were thankfully still alive, so I'd never actually attended a funeral before. I've been really lucky in this regard as well. Like, my grandparents are still alive to this day. Like, like, like I got some going up into his 90s. Like, like, like 80s and 90s, but like, they're, they're still here. I, eventually I'm gonna have to face this reality, you know, but I've been really, really lucky. Uh, I, I'm kind of, I'm almost worried at this point. Like, I feel like I'm old enough now to really comprehend it. So like, when they do leave, like, when their time comes, like, I hope I'm prepared, but like, it's not really like you can really be prepared, you know, there's only so much you can do. The church had adopted an unusual scent, one of mourning. Made the place feel like a bit... Whew, excuse me, cut off from the rest of the world. I guess... I guess I'll never see Natsumi again. The clouds gathered above were as dark as my mood. What did it mean for a person to die? Natsumi had stepped off the stage of my life for good. And so I would now continue to live a life filled with people other than him. Will I eventually die, too? What did it mean to die? It's really funny because, like, you feel like, well, duh, like, of course you will die. But, like, I don't know. Like, if you've never really, like, had someone close to you pass, I, I don't know if we ever really, really think about that, you know? Like, especially when you're young. I'm still young. <laughs> but, like, I remember being younger and just the silly things I never even considered. Like, not truly. Like, I was conceptually aware of things like taxes and conceptually aware of things like debt and, like, you know, like, politics and just the things that now occupy so much of my time that and I remember when those things were things that I was aware of but just didn't care about. And it's funny that death can be one of them, too. Like, it's not something that you often allow yourself to truly think of because most of the time it's such an unpleasant thought and so alien, truly, that until we have that experience of someone close to us passing, we just, I don't know, it's just not really something you make a part of your cognition most often. I mean, everyone's different. So I don't know where you are in your journeys, but for me even, like, I don't know if I've really, really had to confront this before. Not truly. I like to think that I, uh, I kind I... I use stories to do so, but I still wonder. Where did people go when they died? Ah, oh, such fundamental questions. Like, probably, like, some of the oldest questions of humanity. They've driven us to do all kinds of things. Driven us to find truth and in, in sources that seem contradictory and yet always run parallel to each other in odd ways. To someone like me, who had his hands full of the present, the very concept seemed fundamentally alien. Yeah. Ah, I felt something moist on my nose. I put my hand out and immediately noticed a few raindrops on it. The droplets began to multiply, eventually filling the ground around me. It had begun to rain. Ah, I used my bag as a makeshift umbrella and hurriedly, uh, hurried off to find shelter from the rain. A simple rainfall was enough to dispel all thoughts of the funeral from my mind. The world would, would soon end. I didn't know how much truth there was to it, but people on TV and the news made it out to be a big deal. You could even hear people discussing it in class. Okay, so, I mean, is this, what, is that like like the, the 2012, like, Mayan calendar thing? Or is this like a legitimate threat? Like, oh yeah, we have a giant asteroid heading toward us that's going to wipe us all out. Days went by as usual, without anyone truly comprehending that the world would soon end. I still didn't quite understand why I was here. It was certain that the end would happen in the blink of an eye. 
It would be simple and anticlimactic, like a burst of a soap bubble. Ken Colan presents. Oh, it might be the intro, so I might fade out for a second. Mamiya, the shared illusion of the world's end. Alright. Good morning, so. Good morning. Did you catch yesterday's show? Yeah, it still is. It's still great. I'd wake up in the morning, go to school, chat with my classmates, take classes. I'd always been surrounded by other people. Each and every one of them were thoroughly interesting and unique. Thanks to them, I could spend every day with a smile. I'm back. Welcome home. Welcome home, Kato. What's for dinner, Mom? Hamburg steak. I know how much you love it. Yeah! Hey, Dad. Welcome home, Kato. Wow, you're home early too. You're home early today. Yeah, I actually managed to finish up all my work earlier than expected. Kato! Have you washed your hands? I heard Ryota is coming. Uh, I heard Ryota caught the cold the other day. You should be careful. Okay, Mom. For as long as I could remember, my mother had always busied herself in the kitchen. She was a great cook. All of my friends who tasted her dishes told me how lucky I was. I had no frame of reference, of course, but their words filled me with pride. My father worked as a policeman and would come home late every night, if at all. But when he did, he'd always pat me on the back with a reassuring smile. He is strong, firm hands made me want to grow up like him. Kato, we're leaving tomorrow. Are you sure you'll be all right on your own? Mom, I'll be fine. I know how much detergent to use and where we keep emergency money. I also know the number I need to call to reach you. You've drilled this in my head a million times now. Well, okay, if you say so. Come on, Kato's already 15. This will be a good experience for him. I made an assertive nod. My folks used their days off to arrange a trip a trip overseas. Some parents would devote all attention to their kids, but mine still enjoyed having some alone time together. That's the right way, honestly. Um, taking extended trips overseas is a bit... I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think it's probably fine. But, like, it is an interesting choice. Not a choice everyone would make. Ironically, I guess maybe I'm only hesitant because of my experience with overseas travel. Uh, but with my parents. But I was... I was still in elementary school. Uh, my parents decided to take a, a trip to Greece. It's like they, I think they did like a cruise where like it stopped at various points in Greece, and they were able to like go and explore some of the different archipelago, the archipelago, and like all the islands and stuff. They had a great time, and in the meantime, I like was staying with an aunt. But like the day they were flying home, so remember like the this morning, the morning they were flying in an airplane over the Atlantic Ocean. Like, they were mid-flight, like, on their way from Greece to the United States, uh, was September 11th, 2001. So, they were on a plane, traveling internationally, when they saw the news reports of that. And we were staying, like, in a, my aunt's house, and, like, seeing that on the news. And, like, I was young enough to kind of understand what was going on, but not young enough to realize how terrifying it was to realize that there were planes that were being hijacked and that my parents were at that moment on a plane. Like, I should have been terrified. I should have been like, I should have been like quaking in fear, but I didn't really understand that my parents were actually like on a plane at that time. And, uh, my aunt wisely didn't try and sit down and explain to me, though she was terrified. She was horrified and terrified. We all were horrified, obviously. And then, uh, yeah. But, like, so they were supposed to be coming back, like, that next day. Like, they were supposed to be home by, like, the, the day, like, the 12th. Um, but obviously all flights were grounded, and they had a bear of a time getting back. I think my... I think my mom took a Greyhound bus across to try and get home as fast as she could. While my dad attempted to wait for flights to clear up, hoping that he might get home a little faster if they did. But, like, not making my mom stay in, like, 
the airports the whole time. But it took him like a week to get home because even like bus travel was like restricted and like really packed. And so like it just took him forever to just to get it back across the country. I'm just grateful they even landed in the country, though. Like it was terrifying. And then like to like have them and like my grandparents like drove like hundreds of miles to come stay at our house with us while our parents were struggling to get home, you know, just to try and keep, you know, keep everything OK. And they did such a good job. I never even knew that I should be scared. You know, I never even know knew that it was like a problem. I missed my parents, but like, I just, I, I felt perfectly at peace with it. So yeah, I don't know. A little bit of a sidestep with that, a bit rambly, but um, international travel with parents. I'm really lucky I lived, I lived such a like happy life that I never even realized how dangerous that could have been for our family. Who knows? Like they got, they were closer than most people to being caught up in that. Anyway, I found that to be great. Honestly, I was hoping to be also uh, to also be like them when I got older. A few things worried me, but at the same time, I could never bring myself to force them, them to stay. I didn't particularly lack anything in life. It sounds like my life. <laughs> people were nice to me, and I'd enjoyed every single day to the fullest. And yet, I felt like there was something missing, like a piece of a puzzle. So I would continue searching for it. It felt almost like there was a snow white mist blanketing my otherwise saturated life, blurring its outlines. All I wanted was a bit of adventure. That was probably it. That person being ne uh, necess that that person being necessary to me was likely no more than a convenient excuse. Let's see. Have you heard so? Club activities are canceled due to the rain. What? Awesome! We'll get to go home early today. I'm gonna spend my whole day watching TV. Oh. I forgot my umbrella. All right. Ah! I jumped into the rain with a yell. Hmm. On my way home, I spotted something pass. Uh, some something passing a park. I play. I place I normally wouldn't have noticed on a usual day. In retrospect, it might have been fate rather than sheer coincidence that brought me there. The park was completely deserted due to the rain, or so I had thought, but then I noticed a person sitting on the ground, almost like they were pretending to be in another piece of the playground equipment. Okay. You're just sitting in the rain, buddy? You're gonna get sick. Oh. I hurried to the side and desperately called out to them. Um, excuse me. Flat, uh, fattened droplets of rain trickled down the lashes of his closed eyelids. It didn't seem like he'd wake up. He carefully touched his neck to check for a pulse. And that was when I noticed him shivering. This is an emergency! His dark, almost uh, foreign-looking skin was deathly cold to the touch. He'd freeze to death if he stayed here. Right. I took out the towel I'd originally packed for use for club practice and began drying his hair. It's actually kind of interesting, because like you don't ever think about, but like cold rain, consistent cold rain and wet clothing can be actually deadly to you if you don't get out of it. It doesn't take too much drop in temperature to actually give a person hypothermia if they're constantly having their, their heat leached out. You think of the main cold of winter being dangerous, but that's just because it can leach your heat quickly. But even a slow leaching of, of your heat can be deadly. It just takes more time. Please, hold on. Um, let's see. In that moment, his eyes sli si silently opened. His amber gaze bore into me. I found myself gasping. It seemed almost like his pair of amber eyes were the only sources of color in this heavy December rain. Snapping back to reality, I tried addressing him, but... His eyes closed again before I could say anything. Ah, I had a bad feeling about this. Clutching his hand, I realized he'd grown even colder. What do I do? There was no one around to ask for help. I was the only one who could save him. Uh, can you walk? The young man gave a slight nod. I had to help him. There was no other, no one else who could. After making up my mind, I had him lean on my shoulder and started carrying him away in the rain as the rain beat down on us. Back home, I made him lie down on the sofa and headed for the bathroom. After warming up uh, warming up the water, I hurried back to him with a bath towel. Please, wake up. I desperately wiped the cold water off him, hoping he would it would help warm him up a bit. 
His eyelids began to tremble as the light pink towel rubbed against his dark, almost cat-like hair. No, putting him in a warm bath is actually a terrible idea, If he's, especially if he's not keeping conscious. Like, don't want that, no. Uh, best thing would be to just dry him off as best as possible and wrap him up in a blanket. Uh, as his breathing intensified, I felt relief wash over me. Oh, you're finally awake. The next moment, however, he instantly pushed me aside and put some distance between the two of us. Beyond the curtains of his still wet locks, the young man's amber eyes were like daggers piercing my skin. Where am I? Huh? Um... As I took a step forward, still wondering how to answer, I realized there was something off about him. <laughs> His breathing was unnaturally heavy and ragged. As he took a scanning glance around the room, looking positively wide-eyed, the young man grew even paler than before. Are you okay? When I took another few steps toward him, the dark-haired youth grabbed a pair of scissors lying next to the phone and pointed it straight at me. Okay, now you back off slowly. Hmm. <sighs> Where am I? Uh, my knees trembled like leaves in the wind. It was all of a sudden paralyzed by fear. Why did I bring this person to my house? My parents weren't home and wouldn't be for a while. I was at a loss of what to do next. The man, still pale as a ghost, raised his voice to a yell, almost as if to drag my inner thoughts into the open. Answer me! Where am I? This is my house. And why am I here? Well, answer me! He stepped forward as if trying to force an answer out of me. This brought me closer to the scissors. My eyes were glued to the menacingly sharp tip. Uh, I found you unconscious in the park and you were so you were soaking wet, so. In the park? Yes. The young man paused to think for a moment, but kept the scissors pointed at me. What did you do to me? Huh? Answer me. Nothing. I carried you here from the park and dried you off with a towel. That's all. I looked up. His prior animosity was gone from him. He now stood there with a downcast look, preventing me from reading his expression. I see. You were trying to help me, huh? Huh? Caught off guard by his gentler tone of voice, my mind was rendered completely blank for a brief moment. The young man then placed the scissors back on the table and turned around to leave. Wait! I've already warmed up the bath! You could, uh, use it if you like. I'll pass. But it's still raining outside! You might catch a cold! Enough! Let me out! His pain tone made me, made me let out a gasp. For a short while, the only sound in the room was a soft pattering of water trickling down onto the floor from his clothes. Keep your distance from me. And with that, he disappeared into the rain. I stood in the foyer for a long while after he left. I should have tried to stop him, though even I wasn't quite sure what I'd wanted to do, especially after how terrifying our first encounter had been. Speaking of which, I didn't even ask him his name. I was certain one thing, though. I'd never forget the color of those eyes. Yeah, light brown's pretty uh, uncommon. Huh. What's wrong, So? You look down. Uh, a little, yeah. I heard your parents were off on a trip the other day, finding it hard to cope on your own. Well, yeah, you could say that. If you need anything, feel free to come over. I'm sure my mom would love to see you. Thanks. I glanced at the window. It had misted over and was covered in large droplets of water. It's raining again. Not exactly the kind of weather I'd expect from December. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was in the park in the rain in December, fetch. Yeah, he's he he was going to die if he stayed there too long. You'd surely catch a cold if you stayed out this, at a time like this. A cold would be the least of your worries. You could even die. So, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I'm fine. As I touched the cold glass, the tip of my finger got a little wet from the moisture. What would happen to a person if this cold space that spread across their entire body? It's so cold. My finger still hadn't completely dried off by the time the class started. Ah, it's loud! With the umbrella in hand, I took my usual route home. Oh, I was trying my best not to think about it. Yet before I knew it, there I was in front of the same park.
I couldn't believe I was actually trying to run into that man again. I shouldn't do this. There's no way he'd be there again. I was just about to leave when I spotted something moving near the park's playground equipment. No way! Before I could have time to even think things through, my body made a move on its own. Just as I thought, it was the man from the other day. I moved closer to address him, but as I did, his pained expression flashed through my mind. Keep your distance from me. It would probably be better if I listened to his advice. My actions might only end up irritating him. I forced my eyes shut and attempted to leave when... Uh, huh? I heard a muffled groan. Getting too involved would be a bad idea. I'd just be a bother to him. Yet despite my best efforts and self-restraint, I ended up turning toward the direction of his voice. Oh, you're bleeding! The sight of his blood made me immediately rush to his side. Oh boy. Oh, excuse me! Taking quick, sharp breaths, the man wouldn't even open his eyes. Excuse me! I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to say his name make him feel safe. A name I didn't even know. My lips tremulous, unable to form any meaningful sentences. He still wasn't opening his eyes. Maybe I was stick sticking my nose in where it didn't belong. I don't know, man! When there's blood involved, like, they, 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 there's a duty at that point. Even still, I... I'm sorry, but I can't leave you like this. I grabbed his arm and slid over him over my shoulder. He seemed to have been bleeding from his stomach. Yeah, he needs an emergency room. Like, a stomach wound, especially if it nicked any of your intestines. Like, it's a slow, painful way to die. While picking him up, I tried my best not to touch that area of his body. Please hold on. I headed home. The only difference between today and yesterday being the fact that I now had an umbrella. I sat down in an armchair and focused my gaze on a singular point. The dark-skinned youth was resting on my two-seater sofa. The towel I had placed on his stomach was stained red with blood. You call a doctor! Are you an idiot? Oh, fetch. Okay, good. Okay. I thought I'd, I, I thought I'd, uh, I, I accidentally, like, lined my audio. I thought I canceled it, and I was freaking out. Sorry about that. Anyway, I desperately hoped that it wouldn't spread any further. Barely able to breathe, I crossed my hands and waited. The man's ear made a twitch. <sighs> you must have pushed yourself. That wound looks pretty deep as it is. Thrusting the towel against his stomach, the young man carefully sat up on the sofa. Is this your doing? Why? Aren't you listening to me yesterday? I, I mean, it looked pretty serious. I'm sorry for being so meddlesome. I promise it's the last time. I know I might be difficult, but please try not to move, at least until the bleeding stops. He slowly touched the towel with his dark, slender fingers and watched as the blood continued to spread. The silence in the room felt like it would go on forever. As long last, he inhaled a short breath and opened his mouth to speak. Where am I? Huh? At my house. That's not what I meant. I'm asking where this place is. I furrowed my brow, unable to comprehend the meaning of his question. i realizing that he might be getting no answer from me. The young man continued talking, great pains, taking great pains to squeeze out each word. Yesterday, I walked all over this town, but I couldn't recognize a single place I visited. Huh? Actually, I don't even remember anything from before I woke up yesterday. What? What do you mean? The young man's tone grew heavy, as, if, as he himself had difficulty believing his own words. I can't remember anything. Not where I live, not where I, what, not even what I was doing in the first place. Clutching his head, the man cast his gaze downward. In other words, you have amnesia. I never thought a day would come that I'd actually say that kind of thing. In lieu of a reply, the young man knit his brow and closed his eyes. That alone answered my question better than any words could have. The room was completely shrouded in silence. So much so that even the tickling, ticking of the clock began to irritate my ears. Um... There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Your name. Do you remember your name? Why do you want to know? I just realized I, I didn't know what to call you. Sorry, I... Rio. My name's Rio. Rio. The moment I heard that name, the person in front of me gained a clear outline for the first time. The amber flashed of its gaze, the fingertips touching my towel. There were no longer things to be afraid of. I 
don't remember my last name. Oh, I'm So, So Kato. Um, what are you planning to do now? I tried to cu cushion the question the best I could, but Rio only did all, did all Rio did was lower his eyes. I have no plan. I can't remember a single thing. Averting his gaze, Rio made a bitter, self-depreciating smile. Um, can I say something strange? I don't know, can we go to a doctor? That wouldn't be strange. What? If it's okay with you, you could stay here until your memory returns. Huh? Do you have any idea what you're saying? Oh, I'm being too meddlesome again, aren't I? I'm sorry, I just... Don't you remember what I said yesterday? I do, but you were too confused at the time. There's no way I could blame you for that. I suppose you've got a point. Still. Oh, and my parents are actually away on an overseas trip at the moment, so I've got plenty of empty rooms to spare. I don't think that's the issue here. Ryu studied me with a look of disbelief on his face. You don't want to stay? More like, do you want me to? I mean, you're in trouble, aren't you? Ryu's eyes widened in surprise. Uh, I'd appreciate the help. His answer came from a low, barely audible voice. Sure thing. With my parents gone, he'd have plenty of rooms to pick from. Having said that, I was hesitant to allow a stranger into my private space, so I ended up giving him our guest room instead. This is where we all keep the futons. You keep the bed. You go find the bathroom. Bathroom down the hall. I opened the closet and helped him lay down a futon. After that, I continued explaining everything else he'd need to know. Once Ryu had finished bathing, I lent him some of my clothes. They looked a touch baggy on him, but nothing too extreme. Pretty big house you got here. You think so? I wouldn't necessarily say it was too big, though perhaps it was for someone living alone. Still, taking care of a house this size is no easy task. Not only, I only realized that once my mother had left. All the more reason for you to stay, then. I could use the help. My room's on the second floor. Don't hesitate to call if you need something. Sure. Good night. Good night. So, belly wound? Are we addressing that at all? Uh, okay, okay. I guess we're just gonna go ahead and pretend like it didn't happen. My brain continues to work on full throttle even after I'd climbed into bed. Who was Ryu, really? And what was he doing out there in the rain? Could he have been involved in some kind of accident? The shock from the w that shock from that would explain his memory loss. He might very well turn out to be someone dangerous. I wonder what my parents would have said had they been there. I shook my head. Even if that were the case, he meant no threat to me now. Plus, he has no one else to rely on. And besides, I couldn't bring myself to throw out a person with such a lonely look in their eyes. Stuck in a town he didn't recognize with no memories of, uh, to help him? It must have been sarred on his nerves. That said, amnesia, huh? Sounded like something straight out of a movie. I slowly drifted off to sleep. Mm. Oh, look at the time! Mom, why didn't you wait? Oh. Morning. Oh! Good morning. I completely forgot about my parents and their trip. And the fact that a stranger was now staying in my house. So, what are you gonna do now, Ryo? I thought out of frozen rice and ate it with a bit of uh, pollock roe. After helping himself to pickles, the dark-skinned youth looked in my direction. I need to go to school now. Do you think you'll be okay on your own? Rio, who had been calmly chewing his food until now suddenly froze up and widened his eyes. You were just gonna leave me here alone? In your house? Huh? You prefer to come with me to school? I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I'm not gonna do that, obviously. I just don't get why you'd feel safe leaving a stranger in your home while you're away. I mean, I, I, I frankly, though, at this point, like, if you were gonna do anything, he could've just done it last night. I could rob you. I could rob your you and stuff. You know. Well, I mean, you're not the kind of person to do that, though, right? Guy's so naive, but I love it. Like, he's so innocent. It's kind of painful. No idea. You won't do anything of the sort. I'm sure of it. <sighs> he's like, okay. You won't, right? As I tilted my head for oh, with a smile, Rio simply averted his eyes. I'm not planning to, at least. See? Look, all I'm saying is you should be more cautious. You think so? 
Yes. With that, Ryo stood up and carried his dishes to the sink. Did he eat pickles for breakfast? What a weird guy. Ah, oh, I didn't realize it was that late. I gotta go now. I'll head out as well. Huh? You're gonna go somewhere? Maybe you'd be okay with it, but I don't want to spend a day sitting alone in some stranger's house. By the way, my club practice usually ends around 7. Make sure to come back by then. I might, if I feel like it. Rio gave me one final glance before closing the door. I gotta hurry as well. Alright, I'm off! After announcing my departure to the now empty house, I locked my door and left. Not having anyone see me off is kind of lonely. I wanted to see Ryo off, at least, but even though he'd just left the house moments earlier, he was nowhere to be seen. Good morning, Kato. I heard a voice from beside me and turned toward it with a smile. Morning. Wow, look at the time. You might want to hurry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Mamiya. Okay, so that's the name of this thing. I made a warm smile. His name was Mamiya. He was a close friend of mine. Who also happened to be invisible. What? What? You thought invisible people only exist in fiction? Sure enough, it hadn't initially confused me as well. I mean, I just started hearing voices coming from thin air. My first thought was that I might have been, been a ghost. Some days I would sprinkle salt all over my room, and others I'd keep trembling and crying in my bed, unable to fall asleep. But as time passed, I started to put pieces together. Mamiya was not a ghost. And although you couldn't see him, he absolutely did exist. He was also one of the few people who truly understood me. Well, that sounds weird. <laughs> Disconcerting. Good morning, everyone. Morning, so? You're looking better now. Got guy used to living alone, I take it? <laughs> you could say that. Did you catch- Did you catch last night's show? I- I did. It was about some guy with amnesia. Amnesia. The moment I heard that word, my heart skipped a beat. How about you, so? Did you see it? No, I was really tired last night, so I ended up sleeping through it. You're a lost man. It was great. It genuinely made me think about what I'd do if I lost my memories. Well, but that doesn't really matter because if you lost your memories, you wouldn't remember what your plan was. You think amnesia's really a thing? I mean, outside of movies? Movies. I recall the young man said I'd left my house earlier this morning. It was entirely possible that I'd just gotten involved with the very thing they were discussing. Tell my cheeks heat up. All right, it's th that's it for today's practice. Thank you very much. Huh? Hey, he's there. I found Ryo sitting at, my, at the front gate to my house. Y you surprised me. What are you doing here? You told me to come back before dinner. And I also told you where I hide my keys. You could have just waited for me inside. It's your fault. Huh? You really don't think things through. If you found me inside your house, you'd just end up wondering if I'd moved or taken something. It's not a great feeling to have. Did you... Did you wait for me here just to give me peace of mind? While dressed so lightly, too? Got a problem with it. How long have you been here? Heck if I know. I don't have a watch. Ryo averted his gaze. His ears were bright red. As I grabbed Ryo's hand, I noticed that his fingers had turned red from the cold. The touch of my freezing hand, of his freezing hand, made me understand that he genuinely didn't have anywhere else to come but here. Thanks for coming back. Let's hurry inside. I'll get you something nice and warm to drink. Where were you during the day? Oh, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Downtown. Figured I'd look for something I might recognize. I was really thorough, though. Wait, does that mean you managed to remember something? No, not a thing. I see. Anyway, a bit of a food, a bit of food to cheer you up. There's some, uh, some of the karage that my mom left out for me. Karage. You don't know what karage is? It's a type of fried chicken that. Do you think I'm stupid or something? N no, not at all. Where's this karage of yours? In the fridge. I'll go microwave, microwave it for you. You just sit back, relax, and wait for me here, okay? Relax. Like, I could do that. Even the scent of this place is unfamiliar. Ugh. Sorry it took so long, Ryu. I brought the karage with, and put, put some rice and condiments. What is this? Hmm? You mean this book? It's been there for as long as I can remember. I recall reading, rereading it multiple times back in elementary school. So, 
I wonder if the invisible, like, uh, Mamiya is, like, us, technically? Like, because it feels like we're invisible and just here, watching. <sighs> Ryu? I... I know this book. The protagonist is a prince in the Kingdom of the Night. He travels the world in search of blue skies because none of his subjects know what it looks like. Did I get it right? <gasps> yeah, that's exactly how the story goes. Ryo! I guess my memories do return after a while. Visibly relieved, Ryo smiled in front of me for the very first time. Well, that's progress. Our lives together turned out to be a lot nicer than I anticipated. I didn't need to pay him any special attention, and I finally had someone to play video games with to boot. He didn't come across as much of a gamer, but despite his initial clumsiness, he desperately strove to improve his play. I'd never imagined one day I'd be eating potato chips while having an all-night gaming session with someone. Oh man, you have a boring high school then. That was like all I did in high school. <laughs> Living with him was tons of fun. I'm back. Hey, you're kind of late today. Whoa, you're covered in soot. What happened? Did you get into a fight? Here. Huh? He awkwardly hands me a bunch of yen bills. Huh? What's this for? I'm paying rent. I found a job yesterday. Can I take the bath first? Ah, oh, of course, but... There's really no need for you to pay rent. You can stay here until your memories return and... I just felt like I needed to do something. I'd go crazy otherwise. Oh. Forget it. <laughs> felt like some warm paper smelling distinct of croquet, uh, cro uh, croquettes pressed against my face. I got these from the street vendor. Figured you might want them since you're running out of food because of me. Anyway, I'm off to take that bath. Jeez. Wow, he actually got a job. He's way more of an adult than me. I made some late night snacks from the leftovers I found in the fridge. It might have been a bad idea though. Oh, that was actually a great idea. This tastes amazing. That's not what I meant. Well, whatever, I'm glad you like them at any rate. Oh, I'll take care of the dishes. There's no need, I'm used to doing them all the time. But I can't just allow a guest to. Think of it as part of my rent. You just watch TV in the meantime. Okay. All the time, huh? Is this what my life used to be like? Still feeling a bit of guilt for letting Rio do, do the dishes, I nonetheless ended up turning on the TV. As a trusty old CRT word to life, a brief piece of uh, uh, scrolling text showed up at the bottom of the screen. It read, The truth about the end of the world. A bunch of dubious looking adults were having a serious argument about something. The celebrities present would respond in exaggerated reactions in an attempt to make the whole thing seem more exciting for the audience. I put the plates on the shelf. You don't need to go that far, but thank you. What's on TV? How do you feel about all this end of the world stuff? Is that the world actually going to end? Yeah, it'll happen this year, or at least according to these people. Hmm. First time I heard about it. Seriously? But it's been a talk of the town. There was no way you'd go to school and not even hear about... Oh, he had amnesia. <laughs> what would you do if the world ended tomorrow? Ryu sat down some distance away from me as I waited for his response. For a brief moment, he averted a sharp gaze and glanced to the side before finally speaking up. Not a thing. Why? Because there's nothing to do. He stared into the distance with a defeated look. Guess I just spend my day like I always do, then go to sleep. That's it. I see. His answer came to a bit of a surprise. I'd assumed most people would want to do something special on their last day. Under normal circumstances, you'd have to stay in line and obey the rules of society. But if the world was coming to an end, they'd all fly out the window and you could technically do what you wanted. Well, at least the girl sitting next to me in class thought so. I kept thinking about Ryo's answer the TV droned on and on. That's right. I'd say the disappearance of the sun sounds like the most valid theory. What? And what would happen then? Would mankind go extinct? Not necessarily. A few hundred individuals should, in theory, possess antibodies necessary to, serve, to survive such harsh conditions. Wait, what? The sun disappearing? Antibodies? That th those two aren't correlated. Antibodies would would mean like a like a plague of some kind. The sun going out just means life just stops on Earth effectively, and thus we can make a society that can thrive only on thermal energy and bury itself underground. That would be the only hope we'd have. And then we have until the core cool off. Antibodies? As humans, we're all different. Naturally, some of us adapt better to certain environments than others. Only a few hundred survivors. Wow. A video starts playing. It showed a boy living on Earth that had become dried up wasteland. 
I briefly imagined what it'd be like to be that boy. For some reason, I had this feeling that even if my parents, classmates, and all the adults I knew died, I'd still be able to survive. I wonder if it tomorrow will really come. So? Every single day was all people could talk about. Is the world really going to end? There would be no next year, then. No one really knows if the sun's going to come up the next day. I suppose you're right. How about you? Huh? What would you do if the world ended tomorrow? I'm... I'm not sure. It's hard to predict how I act. I see. Wow, look at the time. We've got to go brush our teeth and go to sleep. Right. Hmm. Personally, I couldn't wait for the end to come. I had this completely baseless feeling that it would awaken a special power within me which would then allow me to save the day. And when that happened... When that happens... Phew. Oh, well, that's the cleaning done. Are you still at work, though? Hmm. I think I'm going to end it here. Because that kind of seems like a, a transition. And I think it's been a decent long time. But it's an interesting question. I have a feeling it's going to be one that we're going to talk about a lot. So I'm not going to go ranting on it too much. But it is something to question yourself. Like, what if the world was going to end? What if we knew for a fact that there was going to be an end? Or maybe even not a fact, but like a very high chance of the world coming to an end. Like, and that there wasn't anything you could do to prepare for it. What would you do? It's going to be interesting to think about. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for joining me as a first of this episode. If you're finding this for the first time on the channel, welcome. I hope you stick around. I hope it's something that you like want to come back to see more of. And of course, there's plenty more to explore. Many other titles of visual novels I've covered. I've covered lots of obscure things, things that are smaller but are fantastic, like Seabed. Um, that's one of my top rated visual novels of all time. I've also done some of the bigger titles like Muv Love and Steins Gate and The House of Fata Morgana. There's plenty of great stuff to look back through. So if you're curious and want to watch more content and you don't want to wait for the next week's episode, please check out the playlist on the channel. Thank you specifically to the patrons who are making this uh, channel even better every day. I'm grateful for all of your work and thank you for helping select this series. Hopefully it's something that you enjoy and you're intrigued by it. Um, but most of all, thank you for that. If you want to become a patron, links are in the description below. You get access to the patron cast and also to be able to help see select new titles that we get to cover on the channel. But don't think you're missing out on too much. Frankly, just having viewers here is more than enough. So thank you for spending your time with me. Hopefully you're enjoying the series so far. And thank you to Fruitback Factory who helped provide this title for me. They've been doing really great. Uh, often recommending great series for me to try out on the channel and I'm very happy for their support. Please make sure to check out their site on Steam if you want to see more titles that they uh, that they publish. They do a lot of great translations of works uh, like uh, Seabed, Shusotsu, and other great series. So if you want to like, like find some new visual novels, maybe some stuff that you might not hear on the mainstream so much, please go check out their store link. Um, but not that they're it, it, you know, it's just, it's a great thing to be doing and exploring the space of visual novels. So I thank you so much and appreciate that. But until next video, watching me, I'll see you next. I'll see you there.